What's up YouTube? My name is Chris and if you're watching this in the afternoon, then good afternoon. Uh, I'm here to talk about three bags that I've been trying out recently over the past few months and it's the Brevity Rucksack, the Peak Designs Everyday Backpack, and the Boundary Prima System Backpack. Uh, all three of these bags uh, are modular in that they can carry cameras and other gear as well as carrying other things but here I'm going to talk about uh, some of the main differences between these three you know there's a lot of different videos out there that do a deep dive individually into these three backpacks but this is just my opinion so take that for what it's worth you may have a different opinion and you may like a different bag than what I like for different reasons because we have different uh, things that we carry we have different you know um, must-haves in our bags so this is just a brief overview of what works for me and then <clears throat> I'm gonna be talking about what's actually in my bag and we'll talk about the things that I carry with me every day as well as on a recent trip that I took so so in the last video that I posted about the boundary supply company Prima system backpack the comment section was pretty much, did I ever consider a Peak Designs backpack? And I did consider a Peak Designs backpack, but for my own preference, I didn't initially go with it. And this is the reason why. Uh, the Prima System backpack comes in two sizes, 20 liter and 30 liter. And in the 30 liter version, uh, it only comes in two colorways. It comes in the dark gray or charcoal color, and then the light gray color. Now, for me personally, I particularly didn't really like either of those two colors. Uh, I would have rather had the 30 liter in the brown color or even the all black color. Uh, but those only come in the 20 liter. But then I came across this bag, uh, which was a special edition bag, and it has these brown leather accents in it. Um, and I really love this kind of dark uh, flat char charcoal gray um, but that has these leather accents and I thought it looks really really good so I picked this up and to see if it will work for me um, and so this review is going to talk a little bit about this one uh, the premium system and also the brevity rucksack um, so that's a little explanation about why I didn't initially get a Peak Designs bag is because I really want a 30 liter bag, um, but I didn't really like the colors that the 30 liters came in. So that's the, that's the reason why. Um, and I, I know that color is a silly thing, but the reason why there's different colors is so they have different options. So um, let's dive into um, taking a look at each of these bags and then we'll talk about what I carry with me. So let's start with the Peak Designs bag. The Peak Designs bag is very well constructed and has very good durable material. What I really like about this bag is that it has dual openings on either side of the bag. And so um, I can get access to the bag from either side, whether I sling it over my right shoulder or my left shoulder, which is really, really nice. Uh, also, another good thing with this is that both of these zippers are taped seams. Actually, all of them um, have these taped zipper seams which um, repels water a little bit better than if you had just regular zippers. Um, also, another thing that I like about this bag is that um, from the side, you can access it either from opening the zipper from the top or the zipper from the bottom. So whatever your preference, you can open it either way um, and it gives as really good um, access to the compartment and the body of the bag and that's uh, on either side. You have zipper on the top and a zipper on the bottom. Um, another thing that I really like is that they have these side carry handles and these carry handles are on either side of the bag and, and they make it really easy to carry the bag and the bag is pretty well weighted from the location of the handle to where your gear is. Um, what I've noticed is that I like to carry the camera body towards the middle of the bag rather than the bottom. Uh, the bottom is where I'll put like my drone, the controller, and some other things. And then I can always top load things into the top section uh, of this bag as well. The Peak Designs backpack is very well constructed and the material seems to be very, very durable. Um, 
even after use, there's not very many scrapes or scuff marks on the material, um, and it still holds up pretty, pretty good. Um, one thing to note is that this uh, construction of this bag is more of like a hard shell kind of material where the bag is kind of rigid, so you can't really expand it beyond what it is, and you can't really collapse it to make it any smaller. But this kind of aids in the protection of the items that are inside. Um, because you know that they're not going to be crushed or compressed um, by other things. So you can feel very good about your gear being safe inside of this bag. Um, moving on to the laptop compartment, which is here at the top. Um, also, uh, there's a tape seam here. Um, you'll notice you have this big sleeve down here to put your laptop uh, or notepads here, or maybe like a tablet by this separated divider. But also up here, there is a shallower, kind of like a microfiber or some kind of, I don't know, um, really soft material here. So you can put uh, valuables like sunglasses uh, or um, like um, maybe ND filters or something with glass here that you don't want it to be scratched. It's a really good um, pouch for that kind of stuff. Um, other than that compartment and the main compartment, there's not really any other separated dividers uh, other than the ones you see here on the side. You have, you can configure these any way you want and uh, once you put something in, you can fold this up and you can put more stuff here like I have here on this middle one. Uh, when this folds up, it kind of blocks the whole section so I can put like a lens here and it's not really disturbed by the things in there. And you can position these Velcro, these are just attached by Velcro. You can position these uh, into any configuration you want. Um, but um, yeah, it works really, really well. Um, as far as expandability of this bag, you'll notice here at the top, there's these different kind of like ladder rungs. And this magnetic um, belt, you have to pull it down to let it out. But as you fill up the bag and this moves forward, then this can just attach maybe to the very top um, and close. Uh, and you get a little more capacity here at the top as the top part expands. So um, pretty versatile bag and I love the color of this bag. The color and the accents are incredible and I love it um, as far as straps you have um, your sternum strap here um, and actually here tucked into the sides uh, you actually have like a, a hip belt uh, so you can pull those out and attach it kind of like a waist strap it's not going to give you any support um, it's just going to keep the bag to your body uh, in addition to that, um, on the, in the side pockets, in each of them, there are tons of attachment straps that you can use to lash gear to the sides. And you can attach them onto the various hooks that they have uh, all over the bag. So that's really, really nice too. Also here on the bottom, you'll notice that there are more straps that come out that can do, um, you can cross them and secure gear uh, to your bag or you can use them on the bottom to lash like something bigger uh, onto the bottom. So lots of different um, uses where you can strap gear to the outside. And what's nice is that in a lot of these um, accents are, are um, there's a magnet in here, so it kind of just magnetizes clothes, which is really nice. Um, in each side compartment, you see they have uh, another zippered pocket and in this zippered pocket is where you can store a lot of accessories like batteries and they're color coded for maybe good batteries and then um, depleted batteries so there's a little red stripe um, <clears throat> you can't really fill this pocket up too much because what happens is if this is really full then it's pressing against the stuff that's in here and it's it makes it harder to zip closed so you um, you can just store just a few things, but um, not a whole lot of stuff. And on the other side, there's some different pockets on this um, where you can store different things. 
So this one is little smaller ones. Maybe you can put memory cards in here and maybe some other things uh, in here too. So a uh, really, really nice bag. Um, also these pockets are big enough where you can put a one or two legs of a tripod into here and you can kind of uh, attach it or lash it to the side or you can hang a tripod on the bottom and then carry it that way. So <clears throat> really, really great bag. Um, and uh, I think Peak Designs did an awesome job. Uh, it's exactly what I expected it to be, uh, very similar to my messenger bag. The 20 liter, I feel like the capacity is almost the same as my messenger bag. And um, it's a little bit bigger because you can expand it, but also the benefit of the backpack is that when you're carrying it, you have two carrying straps, so it takes the, laid off, the, the load off of one shoulder. Um, so really, really nice. Um, I, thought they, I think they put a lot of um, thought and design into this. I mean, some of the, the mechanics of this bag, like the uh, articulating shoulder um, strap and... Um, the way that you know you pull this this little tab and it easily extends the um the strap very well thought out um, peak designs is an awesome awesome company so um yeah so that's just a basic run through of the everyday messenger <clears throat> now let's move on to the uh, brevity rucksack now taking a look at the brevity bag this bag um, is awesome because it's a camera bag that doesn't really look like a camera bag I mean, um, it's kind of inconspicuous in that people aren't going to think that there's a bunch of camera equipment in here. Um, so it kind of just looks like a regular backpack. Um, diving into the front, uh, we have these two straps that secure the hood of the backpack to the actual rest of the backpack, which gets you into the main compartment. Um, and then here, in here, this section, it's a padded section that's kind of rigid that holds uh, all of your valuable camera equipment. Uh, over here on the bottom, <clears throat> you have two straps that you can secure something to the bottom of it. And this is actually the easiest buckle system of all three of these bags. It's just the standard buckles that go on and come off just like, you know, normal. Um, in this front pouch compartment, you have a snap closure lid. And these are kind of magnetized, so they kind of just click back in. Um, underneath that, you have these zippers that open up slightly. And inside you have storage space for accessories. You can have maybe cards in these card holder slots here. Um, you have room for pens and pencils. Uh, also pouches uh, separated by uh, material where you can put maybe notebooks, uh, maybe a small tablet or something, passports, other things. Also in here is a key ring uh, clip so you can attach your keys to it. Um, so, you know, just a standard accessory pouch uh, in the front uh, of the bag, and it closes with this. Now behind this front pouch section, you'll notice there's two more zippers, and these zippers lead to the main uh, padded camera compartment of the backpack. If we open that up, we see another layer that we'll have to just pull back. And this layer can be zippered closed, and I'll show you why you would want to do that. And inside of this is kind of like a felt padded material, uh, which is really, really nice. And inside this main compartment of the backpack, uh, you see they have these dividers. Dividers, sorry. It came with more dividers, but I didn't put them in here because this is the configuration that I liked. Uh, they're sitting in the bag. Um, you can put um, small things like lenses or batteries. Uh, I put my drone here, a couple more accessories. My camera sits here with the lens on it. And then I put another lens right here that I usually um, use a lot. It's a smaller lens, so it fits nicely. So yeah, so camera with the lens, uh, with, the, with the, the grip here. Um, so I can just pull that out. Um, lens, batteries, and other lenses. Uh, my drone, and then a padded compartment for other accessories. Um, so it works really, really nice. Another thing that's cool about this is that there's a side access pouch here. And there's also, again, two layers of material, this one being padded. But here is where I put my camera, remember? So my camera, I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, it, the lens shoots down here and the body of the camera is here. So I can pull it out. I have another lens sitting here, um, so it's easy, easy to access. 
<clears throat> the reason why there's two layers of material on this bag is because you can actually remove this insert, the whole insert from the bag. And you could zip up this uh, insert independently of the bag. And you can use it kind of like, um, like a day bag or take it on, um, leave it or leave it in your room and then use this as your regular bag if you're not going to be shooting or something like that. Um, you can tell that there are hard corners to this. So this is the, the rigid construction that's coming from this. So it's hard sided back, maybe like a sheet of plastic in here. And then sheets of plastic on this side, on this side, on this side, and this side. So everything but the front has these hard sided pieces of plastic. Um, which add to the rigidity of this and gives it a little more protection. Um, what's cool about this bag is that if we were to zipper these compartments closed, now there's a, a um, divider that's here, uh, and it's actually zippered closed. You can see the zipper seam here. But if you were to unzip this from the other side, you can lay this flat down, the Velcro here lays flat with this one here, and it makes this whole bag into one pouch. So you can literally top, top load it from here, or you can access stuff from this compartment, and you have the whole body of the bag as like one backpack, just like any other backpack. So it's very um, modular in that way, and uh, really nice to be able to carry your things in different ways. Um, this compartment fits really nicely in here. What I wish that that they did, and this is just a minor, this is a really minor thing. I wish that there was some way to attach this section to this lid, whether it was another zipper here that would zip onto that. So that when you open it, you open up both layers, but it's really not a big deal. You just open that one up too, and then you're in. And the same for the side. I usually just leave these zippers open all the time, and then I can get into it when I need to. So yeah, really, really easy uh, to access. And I'm seeing more and more of these side access pouches. I think everything stemmed from the boundary design where you can access stuff from the side, but it's awesome. It makes it really, really convenient, especially when you uh, want to carry stuff and easily access that stuff without putting your bag down. Moving to the top of the bag, um, <clears throat> you see we have a zipper here. Sorry, you have a zipper here with a little uh, pocket here. And this pouch only comes like this. <clears throat> it's a... Um, it's just a rectangular pouch, that's it. And um, it's not lined or anything, so it's just the nylon material inside. So you still wanna be careful if you're putting something that can scratch easily or something in here, like glass or something else. It's not padded, so um, maybe just regular accessories in here. Also, this zipper here is the only taped seam zipper on the bag. So if you're in light rain and water hits the bag, it's probably gonna just roll past the zipper. But as it comes down here to this section, um, this is not. So it, it's almost like your water is running down, hitting this section of the bag and just soaking straight through it, which will get to your camera compartment, um, which is not really good. But Revity was super smart. And here in the back, in this zippered section here, they, they include a rain cover for this bag. So you can easily, and it's elastic, you can easily take this wrap it around the whole bag and you're protected. Just like that. So it doesn't really matter that the seams aren't taped. Uh, any water that hits is really just gonna hit um, this part, maybe slide down the back, but it doesn't really matter because remember that plastic is on the inside layer, inside of this layer. So you're pretty protected from the elements. And of the three bags, this is the only bag that comes with an included rain fly or a rain cover. And um, that's an awesome, awesome attack addition. 
Um, on the front, <clears throat> you'll notice that we just have um, some padded sections here for lumbar support and back support. Also, the straps are padded as well. Uh, this is actually like a lens uh, cap holder, where if you have a lens cap, you can stick it on here and it might fit. But um, none of my Sony lens caps fit on here, so it's kind of just, I don't know, maybe you have to have like Canon or Nikon lenses. And you know my lens caps are all different sizes, so I don't know. Um, you have a sternum strap here that's adjustable. Um, so you can uh, have, bring the shoulder straps closer together on the front of the backpack. Also, you have a waist strap. Uh, this isn't padded or anything, so it's not going to give a whole lot of support in um, putting pressure on that um, uh, those vertebrae in your back that kind of you know take the load off of your shoulders. Um, but it's just going to keep the bag to your body, um, so that if you're running or biking or sorry bicycling or anything else, it just keeps it from flopping around uh, on your back. Inside of the main compartment, uh, it's just secured by two buckles here, standard buckles. Um, you have a, just like a drawstring, just um, closure, where you just stuff stuff in and then use this drawstring to cinch it down and then you can cover it with this. Um, this, I feel like the capacity of this bag is actually the smallest of the three. Um, I thought it would be bigger because it's the rucksack. They have a smaller version of this bag. Um, but uh, I was kind of, I don't know, I was kind of thinking that it would hold more stuff. Because if you notice that this divider in here zips closed here, um, it's really, I mean, it looks like a lot of space. I mean, it's a hand's depth in, so I mean, you know, it goes all the way down to there. But it's really not that much room. Because if, especially if you cinch it closed, as you cinch it closed, the capacity of the top kind of caves in like this. So you'd really just have like the small section of room in there. Um, I've also thought about putting my drone sitting just right on top of that shelf kind of thing. Um, but it's really not a whole lot of space. You do get this little um, sleeve here. This is for your laptops to go in. and. This is the other backpack out of the three where you have to actually undo the compartment to get to the laptop sleeve. The other backpacks actually have an external zipper that you can get to the laptop sleeve, uh, but this one doesn't. Um, another thing is underneath the hood, you have another uh, zipper pocket here, and this is pretty much the entire hood. So you can put a lot of stuff in here, maybe like a a windbreaker or something or you know some accessories um, but you can fit quite a bit of stuff in this top hood area and yeah that's about it into the bag I mean it is uh, more of a camera bag than a backpack because of the padded dividers um, but it can serve as a backpack too because you can remove that as well it's got one water bottle pocket on the side and another pocket behind that where you can put some other things too. So if you uh, don't want to use that, you can use this section here. Um, on the other side is the access to the backpack. So it is a great backpack. I mean, um, it's a good looking backpack and it's functional. But I just wish that the storage was a little bit bigger considering the size. Like I feel like I can fit more into the Peak Designs backpack than I can in here. And the Peak Designs is actually a smaller footprint. See so here the two side by side. Um, but I feel like the Peak Designs can hold more stuff than this one, primarily because this buckle can expand as, this, uh, as the load gets bigger in here. Um, and so you can store more stuff in the top. But overall, it's a great bag. It's really good looking bag too. Also, um, I think the earlier revisions of this bag, they actually had like a leather patch um, that said brevity on it. Um, and it looked awesome. I tried to find that bag anywhere, everywhere, um, but I couldn't find it. So I went with this and you know, if you got this bag, I think you'd still be happy with it.
any of these bags are great because the point of a bag is just to carry stuff. And if it works for you, then that's all that matters. Um, no one can tell you that your bag is wrong. If you like it, if it works for you, then it's the right bag for you. Um, so this is just a comparison of the two. Now let's move back to, let's move back to the Boundary Supply Company Prima system bag. Um, I've used this bag quite a bit since I got it um, before I got the other two bags. And I gotta say, it grew on me more and more as I was using it. At first, when I got it, um, I thought there was some big misses with this bag, um, especially the organization inside of it. But the more I used it and the more I adjusted the way I carried things, uh, the more I ended up liking it. I really love this buckle system here. It's just super easy to take it off and then it just kind of like finds its way back and just buckles. Uh, it's really, really cool buckle system. Um, internal storage of the bag uh, through the side pocket. Um, there's not a whole lot of space to store stuff in these two separated pouches. I mean, you can move this zipper divider around, but uh, there's really not a whole lot of stuff, place to store stuff. Also, what was weird for me was when I was first using this bag, I would fill this but the bottom of the bag was pretty much unused by stuff because um, I didn't store anything on the bottom. And also that pouch only goes maybe like two thirds of the way into the bag. So on this side, there was this weird gap that would kind of, when this was full, it would look, you know, really full, but this side of the bag would kind of be crushed in and it didn't really look full. I mean, it's just an aesthetic thing. so. Um, I didn't really like that, but I got around it. Also, I never really saw myself detaching this section and, and using it anywhere else. I could take the hip belt out and use it, but I never really saw myself uh, doing that. So um, I was like, why do they even have it? Um, but other than that, I grew to liking this bag a lot. Now, a lot of people had a complaint about this bag saying, oh, it's such a heavy bag. Um, almost, you know, it, you know, it's bulky, it's heavy. Um, they were, you know, they, they were saying that, I think people were saying that without even trying it. They didn't even try it on, which is kind of weird. Like, you have an opinion of something you've never used. But I got to say that this bag out of the three is actually the most comfortable to carry. It's got the most padding in the right places. This airway allows it to stay cool. Uh, these, even though these are bigger and bulkier, they're quite heavily padded. So when you have more stuff on your back, and even though it's a heavier bag, sometimes comfort trumps weight. And I have a really good way to illustrate this for you guys. Let me grab another backpack real quick. This is my backpacking backpack. It's a Gregory Baltoro, I think it's 75. And this bag um, is a heavy bag. It's almost five pounds on its own without anything in it. And when you're backpacking, you're thinking you're carrying everything on your back for multiple days and nights. So the lighter, everything you have, the better. But um, there is nothing that I have found that is more comfortable than carrying this bag. The suspension system on this bag is amazing. It's got articulating hip, hip belts uh, and all your weight is pretty much on your hips when you're carrying. Uh, the shoulder straps are just to keep the bag to your body. And these hip belts um, and this rubberized section that kind of keeps it in place uh, is Amazing. I've never tried another bag that's more comfortable than this bag. So even though it's heavier than other ones like Deuter or North Face or Osprey or even REI's co-op brand, um, I will take the weight over comfort. I think that comfort is more than weight. If it's comfortable and it's a little bit heavier, it's. I think all, over the long run, it's going to be better than a lighter bag that's a little more uncomfortable. I mean, and we're only talking about a few pounds. So I mean, really, it's not that bad. So yeah, that illustrates my point for this. Also, my sleep system that goes with this, my, my sleeping bag 
and my um, sleeping pad are about five pounds together, and my tent is about four pounds. So altogether, my backpack, tent, and sleeping system is almost 15 pounds without anything else, without clothes, food, water. So that's pretty heavy. Um, but I feel like, uh, you know, my sleeping bag is amazing for night. I can recover or sleep well. Uh, my tent is comfortable. It can fit two. So I can actually split that weight in half. So I think comfort is more important than weight. That's just some of the comments we're talking about weight. Like it's super crazy heavy bag, but I don't really care. Shortly after the Boundary Supply Company bag was received, uh, Boundary announced another accessory for this bag, and they call it the MK1 case. And the MK1 case was actually a replacement for this little tiny bag that inserts into the side. And actually it was um, an insert that took up the full um, capacity of the bag. Um, it was announced on February 26th, and I actually ordered it the same day, um, and I'm still waiting for it today. Um, today is June 5th, and I'm still waiting for it. Um, but what it did was it replaced this bag, and supposedly was another insert that took up the entire inside of the bag that gave it more storage options than just the small insert here. Um, after I ordered it and I was thinking about it later on, um, I kind of had a couple of issues with the MK1 case. Um, after I was looking at this picture and it looks like it fits kind of inside of here with a zipper that went around the outside that zipped from the top all the way down and then that flap came forward and you could see what was inside. You could also access stuff from the side. It looks like it has um, like pretty much a similar um, pouch or side access thing as this and it probably snaps to the lid like this one does. But the, the issue I have with the MK1 after thinking about it is that if I wanted to get something say that wasn't accessible in here that was maybe over here, I would have to, um, basically I'd have to come here, unzip this, open it up, and then I would have to unzip that other case and somehow get those zippers all the way down here. And then that front flap, I would have to fold over this V opening of this bag. Which if you think about it, doesn't really seem logical. <laughs> Um, so I am waiting for that MK1 case, but I'm not really excited about what it's going to do for me. Um, so yeah, I'll probably put another video out when I do get it, but, um, when it comes to that case, I'm not really looking forward to, to getting it. I don't know how functional it will actually be. So thank you guys very much for watching this first part of this two series video of the comparison between these three bags. Um, I hope this gave you kind of an idea of the bags and the comparison between the three. Um, I wasn't really stacking them against each other, I was just trying to give some key features of these three bags. Uh, the next video is going to talk about the bag that I ended up choosing to take with me to um, Maui, Hawaii, and what's actually in my bag. What kind of gear do I bring with me? So um, if you like this video, um, check out the other video. Um, I'm gonna be posting it very soon.